So welcome to another episode today in the beautiful and amazing city of Liptus Magna here uh, in the city of Khums. I'm so excited about today because not, not because it's just such an amazing journey we're going to take um, one that I remember coming here as a school uh, as a, on a school journey when I was a kid but also because we're filming for the first time the, in 360 um, for, the, for the Libya Observer here and um, I'm really looking forward to you being able to be in control of this documentary for the first time so wherever we are you can look around and see the amazing different um, sites and everything all around you um, as you see behind me here, Liptus Magna in 1982 was declared a World Heritage Site meaning that it's not just a city for Libyans, it's a city, it's a world, it's a city for all the citizens of the world everyone I believe should come to this place and and see all the different, uh, the, take this step back or this journey back in history which is exactly what it is when you enter into Liptus Magna Lips Magna, everyone thinks, is a Roman city, but it was actually a Phoenician city beforehand where the Phoenicians would have travelled along the, the North African coast and found the harbour here in Lips Magna, a perfect place to port their ships and um, to do trade with the, with the, um, with the North Africans of, the, of that time. Um, it wasn't until later on that the, the Romans came and built this extravagant and amazing city that we know today the city of Liptus Magna. Um, if you look to the right of you, now if you tr journey along to the right of you, you'll see a road that is built, that would have been the road that led from uh, Terhuna all the way, what we know as Terhuna now, all the way into the city. And it would have been the farms there, the stores for the grains and, and all that kind of stuff. And they would have, be, this would have been the road that would have brought in uh, those uh, goods into the city. Also if you look to the left of you you'll see what is called the Triumphant Arch and this Triumphant Arch was built for Septimor Severos who has an amazing story in himself. Septimor Severos of course was um, a son of Liptus Magna. He was born here and this was his city and along his journeys he ended up in within uh, the city of, of Rome and from there he became a commander of, of what was called I think the third legion or the third army or the third battalion and during the course of, of the war and revolution that happened in, in, in Rome he emerged as the emperor of Rome there and so when he returned to Liptus Magna because Liptus Magna during that period became the capital of the Roman Empire in Africa and so when he returned here, he would have journeyed along this, this road and, came, and this arch was built uh, to welcome and commemorate their son returning home here as an as a, uh, emperor of Rome, which would have been, I can imagine at that time, amazing with just trumpets and, and people celebrating and the carts. And you can only imagine in your mind when you look at these scenes what, what it would have been at that time with these extravagant arches and buildings that were built for those for that period in time so I'm really excited about today we're going to meet later on a, um, a, 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 a historian and, and of, of this area who has a huge knowledge about the history of Liptus Magna and he's going to bring us through all the different parts and I'm so looking forward to meeting him later on so let's go let's do this today Assalamu alaikum. Hello Mahmoud, nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be here today, it's fantastic. And we got lovely weather today as well. Very lucky. Yeah, brilliant. I'm so looking forward to this amazing place. I've come as a child, I know what it's like. Tell us. Well, it's been very quiet lately here, but nowadays a lot of Libyan people start to come and hopefully tourists will come again here to Liptus Magna. Starting to love their culture again and love their history again. Well, That's a good here. thing. It's here, always here, but you know, these people, they want to come and enjoy the, the history and the heritage they have here. And what an amazing history, huh? Yes. 
And so tell us, what, what are we going to do today? I'm so looking forward to today. Well, you are in Liptis Magna. This is a magnificent site. And uh, what we're going to see in Liptis Magna, actually today, it's only about 40% of the site has been discovered, even though it's a huge no city, way. but yeah, if you look around here, the city today, you can see 60% uh, of it is still buried underneath the sand and the mud. Wow. So there is a lot of potential is still hiding wow. underneath the sand and the mud. Wow, amazing. Yes. So tell me if you're now we're, we're filming this in 360 for the first time yes. as well. This is, I'm, I'm excited to, to, to show people that they, they have control. So for example, now if the viewer looks up, for example, and what they see here, what, tell, tell us a little bit about what now, you're Now, we at met at the intersection of uh, one of the two main streets, Leptis Magna. This street here goes north to south. This is Cardo Street. It goes from the north to the sea, mm -hmm. all the way to about 44 miles to the south, to a place we, we know nowadays called Tarhuna. Okay. This is where they have a lot, a lot of olive oil trees and uh, olive oil presses. And then they bring it to Leptis Magna and export it from here. Wow. And then, this intersection here, mm -hmm. this is called uh, Dikemanus. Start from Alexandria in Egypt, all the way to Carthage in Tunisia. Very Egypt. long road. This is two names, very common names in any Roman city, Cardo and Dikemanus. Wow. You can find them in any Roman city. Yeah. Now, now, they build this arch here, yeah. Yeah, at the intersection of two main streets here, as you said, to welcome the ember in his hometown. So this is a triumphal arch for our local son, Sephiros, Septimus. Okay, mm -hmm. and as you can see, when the Italians came here in the early 1911, mm -hmm. they started doing the excavation and the restoration here. So this arch was almost buried and destroyed by the, you know, the earthquakes and the wars and everything, and buried underneath the sand. Once they cleared the sand and the mud, they found the four bases of the arch, and this is how they figured that the arch would look like this. Okay. So the Italian done most of the work to restore the arch. I see. All the and, stones. And with these artifacts, let's have a look. With these artifacts here, these would have been. As you can see, all the pieces are original pieces. This okay. is limestone, are original. Some of the carving that you see here, if it's marble, then it's original. That's Otherwise, this is, uh, 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 you know, uh, copies. Remade uh, the original ones, a lot of these original carving, you can see them at the Tripoli Museum. They've been placed there for many, many years. Okay. To okay? Them, yeah. But originally, uh, generally, we're talking about this carving. These carving represent the, the festivals where the Emperor surrounded by his people. People are dancing in the street. People bringing animals to be sacrificed during the, the visit. Uh, this is all a celebration. Okay, it's a celebration. And so any of these have a sem uh, th 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 that's what they resemble? Gifts, the yes, yes, yes. yes. gifts, uh, celebration, everything. The royal family gathering, Ember with his fa uh, family, his wife, Julia Domna, his two sons, Gita and Caracalla. Also, you can see in the corner there, you can see the four eagles. These are the sign of victory. And that's why they call this arch a triumphal arch. When he became as the emperor. Yes, or he yes. Became uh, I remember when I was young, and there used to be uh, the arch surrounded by uh, fans, and they used to have wooden boxes. So they used to gather all these small bits together, uh, like a jigsaw puzzle. Okay. Once they have a clear picture, then they glue it together and stick it in the wall. And a pack. Fantastic. So they have done a magnificent job. So tell us, Mahmoud, if, if, so what what some of the highlights that we have today? Give it to me. Well, today it's a, it's a big site, as I said, but we're going to cover the most important sites and the uh, the, the, the highlights of the city. Okay. Now, uh, our next place we we're going to head nowadays, we're going to take uh, to, uh, right here, uh, Nicomonas, all the way to the Hadrian Bath. Huge building, a magnificent place, and you can see the festication and the decoration and the, uh, the, the art of the, uh, uh, the Romans, 2nd uh, uh, century AD. And this road here would have led to? All the way to the sea, the old form, the old city, where the Phoenician lived in the first place. And this road? This road, as you can see, that gate that leads us to the western gate to the city. It's called the Oya Gate. Oya is the old name of Tripoli. So in the old days, when people want to go from the west side, that's the entrance to the city from there. Fantastic. Listen, Mahmoud, I'm looking forward to today. Okay. Let's do this. Okay. I'm so looking forward to this. Oh, I can't look. Everything here, Mahmoud, in this place is so grand and so big, and you can just see the sim symmetry being used in all of the streets and everywhere. 
I mean, like when we walk in now, for example, here, and you see this X in, in the street below us, and you can see that everything is built to beautiful symmetry. Um, you can only just imagine what it was like back in its old day. Yes. Tell us more about where we are today. Well, now we enter another alley in the city, where right now we are in the uh, Balestra, a place called Balestra. This is where people come uh, to do some sports, get sweat, and then from here they enter to the bar, the so great the, Roman bar. So if the viewers now look, take to the left of you, you'll see what is called the old Roman or Adri Adri Adrian Bath. Adrian Bath. Yes. Uh, now, if you keep going straight, you can see the big uh, building there. This is the uh, Nymphium. It's uh, another small uh, temple belongs to the nymphs. This is where the young women used to come, and with the great fountain in the front. Uh, so this, the whole area, actually, one of the sections, uh, the right section to the city here. Mm -hmm. So you, so I can imagine, like what they do today in these days, and to, to think that back so long ago, they would have known how to do this. Like these days, they go to the gym and yes. then they go to the sauna. It's exactly what they would have done yes. centuries ago. After a heavy day of work, they come to the uh, bath to enjoy themselves with a hot or cold or a wet bath and everything, and then to meet each, uh, you know, to meet each the other here, to socialize place. and everything. Uh -huh. So and then come here, then uh, uh, and then train as well. Work yeah, out. that's before they go. It was an important part yes. of it to train your body and. Yes. Be in, and the reason they have Hadrian bath in this area because behind the building we have a wadi or a river. It's called Wadi Libda or the river of Leptus Magna. So the Romans have built dams and reservoirs so they can have water supply all year long from the wadi. So water supply was very important and the reason they have the bath in this area because of the water supply from the back. I must, uh, you, have to, you have to give applause to the architects of that time, yes, they were amazing, they knew, they knew exactly where to build everything. The up. other thing to remember about this Magna is the, the sophistication of the architecture here. Uh, where we, wherever we go, we're going to see a massive uh, use of uh, marble everywhere. And the marble, as you can see around us here, you can see the Cipollino. These columns are called Cipollino marble. These are from Greece. Inside the bath, we're going to see marble from Italy. We have some local so marble. Even the marble was shipped from different parts Everywhere, of the world. Even from Aswan, we're going to see the red granite from Aswan, Egypt, all the way from Aswan. So wow. it's, a, it's, it's a very luxurious city. They spent a lot of money. Uh, they were wealthy. And they had no money, uh, no problem in spending money in their city. Uh, a building for our city for the high class. Exactly. Really. Built to last. Yes. Definitely, to sum it up. Definitely built to last. Yes. Can we see the baths? Yes, let's, let's go. Let's go on. Yes. Is there any chance we can take a bath now? Well, I hope, I hope not. I hope the water <laughs> is hot. <laughs> okay, Sam, what are you doing, Sam? What are you doing, Sam? Ah, uh, I'm just waiting for all the lovely water to come in here so I can have my bath. It's too bad. It's gonna it's very, very dry here. You can see very little rain came here. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get much more than that little. I remember once we came to the pool here, it was full to the top, full the rain here. Rainwater. Rainwater. Yeah, I've seen it in my life. Lovely, lovely. As you can see, this year is very, you know, very quiet and very dry. Now we are inside the pool, right, you know. As you can see, but you can see the original marble attached to the wall there. Yes, and the mosaic in the floor. Uh, as you can see in some places here, you can see the original mosaic in the floor. Yes. So you can picture the whole path here, full of water, marble on the side, uh, and mosaic in the floor. And this was the this was the outdoor pool. Yeah, outdoor pool. An outdoor pool. Yeah. So there's still, still more to come. This wasn't oh, yeah. even the main pool. Yeah, inside we're gonna see the cold water baths, the hot water baths, the warm tibidarium, calderium, laconica, even the sweat bath. There's Sauna. So it's a bit complex as you're going to see today. I don't think you're going to get me out of this place. Let's go. <laughs> we have a lot to see. We have a lot to see, and I think I'm going to stay here for the night. Mahmoud, again, everything's so symmetrical. I, as soon as you walk in, you see the lines are perfect. And so we just walked in now into what was called, what this would have been uh, up here behind you. Yes, this is the whole area here called the frigidarium, cold water bath. 
So now you are inside one of the baths in here with cold water. Uh -huh. uh, what's so amazing here is the restoration inside here. You yes. can see all the marble behind you. This yes. is all the original marble, even though it's been restored. But yes. the marble itself is original. The original pieces of yes, the actual bath. Pieces. And here also, uh, as you can see, these columns are the biggest columns you see left this night. Now. Very huge Cipollino columns. Come over here, let's see this, see this over here, these big huge um, um, marble columns, and they're absolutely gigantic. Yeah. So this would have been a really high ceiling. Yeah, about maybe, about, uh, maybe 15 meters high, the ceiling here. And even though they have discovered some pieces of the, uh, the decoration they used to have at the top of the ceiling, with some kind of mosaic in here. Okay, and so, uh, and this, this slab here would, would be at the top. At the, the top, this capital here. Absolutely gigantic, yeah. so big. And uh, they believe that some of the columns are missing from this area. They're being shipped away from here. We're gonna talk about this later when we uh, reach the uh, the sea. Okay. I'll show you. Okay. So some of the columns, big columns like these, are missing. And we're going into now the next part, which is. We still have the uh, tibidarium, warm water. We okay. call it nowadays. We call it jacuzzi. Okay. And then we have the co uh, the caldarium, the hot water. And then we have the sauna, la conica. Wow, let's go. <laughs> let's do this. Okay, Mahmoud. Tell us more. What's okay, happening? now we finish with the cold water bath. Now we enter the new area. It's called the Tibidarium, just warm water bath. We have one, two, and three. You see, nowadays we call it jacuzzi. Mm. People, you know, just just warm, not hot, not cold water. Mm -hmm. And behind the building, we have boilers. So they heat up the water, and through the pipes, they bring the water in here. Wow. And as you can see now, very beautiful marble attached. Yes. Hey, all this marble is original marble. So people would sit around here, in socializing, and enjoying the water. So here. there was actual boilers outside exactly. that heated the water, yes. that brought two pipes in towards these baths. Yes. At that time, was there any, like, that must have been, uh, you know, very rare or maybe unseen before for that time. Well, <coughs> the Romans, they have used, a lot of people ask how the people use, what they use for energy. In those days, people grind olive oil, take the oil, use it as a, a torch or a lamp, and then they take the residue to use it with the burning. So the olive oil residue is a very good source of energy. Wow. It gives a lot of heat. Before the time of what we have fossil fuels exactly. now, it was the yeah. original version. So I think that's one of the main source of energy in those days. And so in here there were, there were these three baths. Three just warm water baths. And if now, the viewer now looks in the 360 again, you can see again the, the, the arch behind you, just how luxurious all this area and how... It's covered with ceiling here. It's all dome ceiling. Well, a lot of uh, decoration, and as you can see, still marble attached here. The original building will be all covered with marble. All the bo the air, the bottom area here. Yes. Like so usually just for just for added luxury and just. Yes. For, yes. Yeah. So like, as you can see, limestone, and then they put plaster, and then marble at the top. So it, it, it's almost three like three layers. Oh, it would have been marble all the way. All the way to the oh, top. Okay, I thought it was just at the bottom. No, 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 oh, all the way. Wow. Another kind of marble here, that's Italian marble. Very beautiful columns in here. Brought from, I from Italy. Italy. Italy, yes. All the way shipped it yes. over. Yes. Home from home, huh? We have a collection of marble from everywhere. Wow. Okay, so let's go and let's get the, now, the next section. Now, this will be the uh, calderium, hot water bath. Okay. So we're coming in now into... The uh, hot water bath, calderium. Wow. Okay, we have about five baths in here with hot water and this area will be covered with all with marble and this is where people would come and have a massage here they, they used to apply olive oil to their skin and have a massage relaxing here and also they use uh, uh, some kind of metals scrubbers to, to clean up their skin with and we found some of these scrubbers in the museum here so this is where they do here what they do here uh, the interesting thing about it, as you can see, it's all covered with the ceiling here, and you can see traces of the uh, what's left from the ceiling at the top. It's okay, a mixture. So viewers should look up now. Yes. Look up to the top here. You'll see what the gentleman is explaining to us now at the moment. Yes. This is what's left from the Roman concrete at the top. 
It's a very sophisticated uh, concrete, Roman concrete. It's a mixture of sand and clay and mud and small bricks. So uh, the Romans had invented uh, their own kind of concrete. And this would have covered all, all the way, way all the way, all the way to the top. And stayed in position. Yes. Okay. Now, uh, as you can see the pool here, uh, and behind you can see the water reservoir. This is one of the water tanks that we have here. And beside, behind the trees here is the wadi. This is the wadi libda. This is where the water supply would come from. Can we go and have a look towards here? Yes. So let's have a look and bring the viewer with us. So this would have been one of the hot water baths here? Yes. And how would the, the same way, was this a fire somewhere here? Yeah, the burner in the back. Or the burner outside? Outside, yeah. This is just a, a water bath, hot water bath. But how would that heat would have come come in? Or and was you can it? see if you come to the Traveled hot. Exactly. So it would have had like a, a circulation. System, circulation yes, system. Exactly. Okay, oh, yeah, now it is. Yeah. Uh, also, the, uh, as you can see the, the sign is here, you can see the terracotta pipes. There are the pipes that go all the way to the top. The archaeologists think that these pipes work as. as, can we as see them? Yes, these are the terracotta pipes. And we can see them here and also in the sauna. Mm. Okay? This is for the hot air. Now, once the hot the, the water is heated, the, uh, the, the, the viper, or the, the, the vibration of the water goes up and starts to con condensate, coming back as water drops through the pipe back into the water. Wow, so we have a circulation of amazing. water here. That's You're not amazing. supposed to have a mess of water laying around the room here. That's true. What amazing archaeologists or architects. Yes. Absolutely. So uh, they thought of everything. And to actually, they would have built these back then like terracotta square like hollow yeah, pipes each one is about uh, it's a rectangular shapes and to each have one about 30 to 40 centimeters in length and they build them at the top of each other to make a long pipe all the way yes. that's amazing and you can see traces of these pipes in the wall there broken true yeah i can see it that's amazing i hope the viewers are taking in everything that's happening here you can see it's like a, an amazing large like, sauna area like what we would have today but uh, on a grand scale, I don't like even in some of the, the largest uh, spa recreational centers that I've been to now are probably not as luxurious as this uh, for back then. Like, you know, to think even to have that kind of a system where condensation would have risen with the, with the pipes and came drop as droplets back down into the pipes, it's, uh, it's amazing for that time. And later on, I will tell you by the end of the tour, I will tell you how many people used to live here. Now, just to look at the scale of the, uh, all the facilities that we have in the city, uh, later I'll tell you how many people used to live in, in its peak time. Wow. Yeah? Let's go on this. Okay, now we have one more room to show you here, which is the sauna for the Laconica. The actual sauna itself? Yeah, this is what we know now as a sauna. Uh, they call it Laconica. Oh, fantastic. It's a uh, sweat bath. Oh, it's uh, just even separate from these sauna Yes, baths. yes. Okay, brilliant. So where are we now at the moment, Tim Mahmoud? <coughs> yeah. Now, as you can see, this is the, um, the Turkish bath, as we know nowadays, but they call it Laconica, the sweat bath. Now, if you look around here, you can see this is the floor level. Right now, we are underneath here, the floor. Oh, wow. The floor level is supposed to be up to that level. So, that, sorry, Mahmoud, so this here is the actual floor, floor level, the original floor level. Yes, and you can see these tiles, they're supposed to hold the floor, like to hold the floor from underneath. Okay, and what was the reason for that? Okay, now there is the furnace. They heat the water, and the hot air and the steam so will come on from second, underneath. So, hang on one second. So if the viewers on the three, the whole room, the whole if you look over to the to this this side here, you see that the the, the, the furnace would have been here, and hot water, the hot air, hot steam, the hot steam would come from underneath the floor. Okay, which would have superheated the actual floor itself. Yes, and then along the wall, you can see the pipes. Okay, okay, so the hot air and the steam will go through the pipe into the room. So we have, we have a room full of hot air and steam. Wow, that's amazing. And that's the thing that they call the high cost system. Wow, at that time. Okay, now you can see the pipes here, all the living pipes. Mm -hmm. And then they put the plaster and then marble. So these pipes, it's all hidden pipes. You don't see them at all. Oh, how amazing kind of work. And these go all the way up to the top. 
And so, is this like some kind of a section that they've rebuilt to show? Exactly, exactly. To show you what kind of flow we used to have. Can we see the humility over here? This Mahmoud, this looks unusual. Yeah, this is the restroom now. Well, it's called latrines, the public latrines. This place is a, a, a huge place. You can have mass, massive uh, people, you know, massive number of people coming at once. Use the facilities here. Up to 50 people, more than 50 people, wow. they can come and in, in use the toilet here okay. and socialize at the same time. Okay. Let's have a seat and relax. We, we could have a chat here let's, together. Let's go back in time. What, yes. what it was like. Ah. Uh, Relaxing, relaxing. Yeah, very relaxing here. Ah. Now, as you can see, very, very um, cold marble sometimes mm -hmm. in winter, mm -hmm. but still very cozy and very relaxing. It is relaxing. Uh, yeah. This is the, the clean water drain. So okay. people, after use the, uh, the toilet, they can use the water for cleaning up uh, with the, you oh. know, mugs or sponges for okay, cleaning up. Okay. Uh, where people sit around here, it's all covered with the ceiling, as you can see. Mm -hmm. So we have a shade here, only in the middle part. It's open for fresh air, and of course, with 50 people, you need a lot of fresh air. Sure, definitely. Right. Yeah, I can imagine. And now, another interesting thing about the toilet here, the public toilet. Once they clean the baths and the pool from inside, they have a drain that will come through the latrines to flush the toilet with it. Okay, so it would have been just a, exactly a, after they clean the pools, the water will come. To, a way to recycle the, the water too. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Of just waste. Okay, so to, to flush the toilet here. Once they clean the pool, they come with, come through here uh, for cleaning up. Another thing, they use the ashes from the burners to dump it down here to get rid of the smell. Oh, good idea, yeah, good idea. Okay, so that, another interesting idea yeah. that they have in these public toilets here. Wow, that's amazing. Yes. So it actually wouldn't have been that bad of a smell if we have all of these taking these kind of... Uh, Precautions and uh, of course, air and, with the, a lot of people the, using these facilities, yeah, you it's have being to flushed all the yes, time with yes. water. That's, you know, Another interesting idea that a lot of people ask if these facilities are used by men or women or oh, together. True, yeah. yeah, which is a very good uh, question. Mm. And of course, uh, since those days, men were more dominant mm. than women. Mm -hmm. So uh, men, of course, were you know they use it uh, mostly men, mm -hmm. but maybe. And there is a question mm -hmm. mark between this. Maybe they have different times for women, but not together. Oh, they wasn't together. It no, wasn't I don't it. think they are together because most of the uh, the ins inscription that we seen and the stories being told, it's all men. True. Okay. Okay. See, yeah. So maybe they have different times for women, but not together, as far as I know. Okay. And as the viewers, maybe if you have a look and see some of these places, and it's perfectly, you know, carved out and. You know, it's even the, the, the gap is not made too big, so probably it won't let as much smell back out. And it's covered from here, as you can see, you don't see nothing down here. From the side here, it would have been, if you look over here, the side would have been covered as well, you know, to stop any smells escaping back out and stuff. And the fresh water from here, all carved out of the marble. Unbelievable amount of work they put into this place. So, Mahmoud, tell us what, what this beautiful place is now. Yeah, this is the uh, Nymphium, it's a temple for nymphs. Uh, it was built at the intersection or in the city square here. As you can see, very beautiful uh, uh, site here. Okay. Uh, the nymphs being... The nymphs is the, uh, the, the young women used to come here, pray to their gods 
You can see the niches here where they used to have the uh, statues, their gods, different gods that they worship here. Okay, if the view is now in the 360 as well, turn right around to the far side. You'll see the niches that Mahmoud is explaining about and the, 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 the fashad or the entrance of the actual temple itself. Uh, as you can see now, the, uh, the, the, the temple here used to be a, a semicircle in the middle. But because of the floods that we had here uh, not very long ago, uh, the latest one was in 1988, that made a lot of destruction to the t temple here. Okay. And you can see the big chunk uh, or half of that semicircle falling back as a big chunk there. Oh, I see it over just over here. Yeah, yeah. so that used to be a semicircle here. Oh, and half of it has fallen back on itself. Yeah, I see that's that. uh, yeah. the latest destruction from the wadi. Okay. Uh, so there's the a stairs in the back that lead to the second floor. Uh, niches, uh, marble, uh, very beautiful place here. Is this part um, the, the public area? Yes, out here. So we're still area. on the street here. Yes. So the people would have came off the street. This is like a pathway. Yes. The, the inside of the temple is still in behind. Exactly. Here it would be like a water bath, like uh, uh, full of water here, and the niches there, and even uh, yeah, you know, there's a picture of Mussolini. They said that when he came to Lipsis Magna in 1936, he had a speech. He uh, in this in this uh, spot, okay. that balcony in the second floor. Oh, okay. I see that. If you can see now, the viewers in the 360. If you look up over to this side here, it's like a balcony that still remains there till now. And uh, I think that Mussolini was there giving a speech when he was at this great city. You can see the view here from the picture here. Mm -hmm. This is a simulation computer picture. Okay, so there would have been, in, in each of these niches would have been, and the niches are, are two stories high as well. So you had the statues at the bottom, statues at the top, going all the way around the semicircle. I'm sure that was a beautiful facade to, to, to uh, see. Another thing, you can see the columns at the top. These marble columns from uh, the, the red granite, these are from Aswan. That's the kind of marble being brought all the way from Aswan in Egypt. The actual the actual column itself? Yes. Okay, wow. So another, so another we have from Italy, we have from Egypt. Yes. Brought all the way here just to give a different color probably just to the... Beautiful decoration here done with the marble as you can see. All these pieces still shattered around here. Yeah. Uh, very beautiful handcraft here. Yes, you can see that. Probably... But the work has to be done. A lot okay. of work, a lot of work. Amazing. That's the thing about the Magna, marble being used everywhere. Mm. So where do you think, where, where will we go now next? Now we are heading to the biggest place of the Magna, is the Severan Forum, or the New Forum. It's the biggest place, the most wonderful, uh, scenery you can see inside the form there. Beautiful, let's okay. go and do this. Wow, so people would have prayed here all that time, huh? So now we left the temple behind us at the moment and we're yes. walking along the street. Now we are heading toward the uh, new forum or the Severn Forum. But now, before we reach that, we entered a new street called the Colonnaded Street, about 600 meters in length and about 250 meters in width. I think the viewers of the 360 should look behind you now yes. at the moment. Yes. This will see the street. Yeah, this should take us all the way to the harbor from here. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, this street is supposed to have 250 columns to the right and 250 columns to the left. Only one column is still standing, Where? and the rest is all collapsed. Where are all those columns? Uh, lots of stories being told about these columns here. One of the stories being told about the French council, his name is Claude Lemaire in the 16th century AD. He, what was he doing in here? Well, he was a French council in Libya. So he shipped more than 600 columns from Liptis Magna uh, and they, he used them to build the Palace of Versailles in France. Really? Yeah, this I've is a, the of yeah, well, this is a, a very uh, true story being told with many different sources. Now, if you look at the, uh, the bases of the columns here to the right or to the left, every two and a half meter, there's a base of a column. Okay. So this is where the columns used to be. Of course, in the middle here, it's open air road. But in the side, it's all covered sideways. Oh, so there would have been like a roof on either side. In the side, the in the, a roof in the side. For people but to walk in the shade. Exactly, but in the middle here, it's uh, open air road. Horses and carts yeah. and travel children. Yes. Okay, so now that will take us to all the way to the, the biggest place in Lipsis Magna, the, the new form, or the Severn form. 
this is where the action will take place. Okay, brilliant. Starting to get uh, warm, uh, Mahmoud. Huh? Yes. Well, I think it's time to go to the refriger, uh, refrigerator. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, so we're after coming off the color. What is it called? The color. This is the colonnaded street colonnated now. Street. Now we are entering the, the big forum here. Okay. But before we enter the forum here, you can see that the, the doors here. These big doors are shops. So these are shops facing the colonnaded street here. So if the viewer now on the 360 now turns around, follows us here, you can see on the right and, and left here. Uh, would have been like many, many shops all yes, the way along. All the lo along the way here to the forum. Selling these all kinds shops, of goods, yes. all kinds and of... And of course, these are all covered all sideways here. Uh, from the, these big massive columns would have held yes. the roof of this yes. section here, yes. keeping people in the shade. Of course, uh, you can see all this area in the lower work. You can see uh, still needs a lot of restoration in this area. Yes. But uh, the doors are still there. They're still, you know, intact. And were very well made, the kind of entrances. Yes. I mean, there's a... Uh, I'm sure these people would have paid a lot of taxes probably for well, then it would be a more shops inside the forum as we enter the forum now. Okay. Okay. Wow, Mahmoud, look at this place. So Massive, you, eh? when you're saying to me a forum, I didn't imagine what you were telling me about. Like so. Well, this is the city center here. Uh, people would come from all over the city and gather up here. Uh, the rich, the poor, the everybody workers, here. This the is soldiers. where everybody gather up here. Uh, also to do some shopping here, uh, talk about business, war, anything that happened in the city, this is the, where the action will take place. And they, they would have been like shops or something exactly. like that? Exactly. These are very famous, very unique, expensive shops. Wow. Not anyone can open a shop here. This would have been the Givenchy and the Prada. Exactly. And the, this is the, the um, Chandelier. Okay, I All see, right? I see. Uh, as you can see, the forum here is open air in the middle, more than 100 meters in length and uh, 80 meters in width, open air. In the side in here, as you can see, there's some columns, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, at the top of the column, we have these uh, reconstructed arches with the Midoza head that goes at the top of the column, okay, all so the, the way. Viewers on the 360 you should look over now to this part, what Mahmoud is explaining. So these would have sat along all the way. On uh, the top of the column. Across the way, yeah, All the wow. top of the columns, all the way around with the Midoza head. See. Hidden Medusa. And these hidden Medusa are supposed to protect the people from the evil eye. They get rid of the evil eye. Okay. In here, this is the, um, the, the temple at the top. In the bottom, there's a temple and underneath. But at the top, there's a temple and the stage also. So the, uh, the mayor of the city or the council of the city, if they want to make an announcement or speech, they will climb up to the top and speak to the crowd where everybody will gather up here. And even the acoustic here is very beautiful. Listen, listen, I will speak a little bit loud and you can hear the acoustic here. Caesar, we are here! Wow. Uh, very you, nice acoustic you, here. You brought me back, you brought me back in time. Again, if you look into the wall, you can see the holes in the wall. These are reconstructed walls here. And the holes there to stick the marble because everything was marbleized. Ah, yes. The walls, the floor, everything was covered with marble. So you, you can imagine. Same again, no expense saved. It was all spent, whatever exactly. whatever this place needed, the, the Caesar was ready to spend it. Yeah. Wow. So this is show you how big is the city and how many people used to live here also. Now it's time to tell you because you see, this is the scale of the city here. Now they said at its peak at the end of the third century, around about maybe um, uh, 80 to 100,000 people used to live in town here. That's a, a large it's number a lot, for this town. Yes, a lot. Like what they like a, what they fill a football stadium now. Exactly. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. For such a place. I have to try what you tried. My name is Marcus Aurelius. <laughs> I hear the acoustics you're talking about. I felt grand. I felt like Caesar. It's amazing. So now behind this wall, also the, the shops in here. There's another building, beautiful building. Right now it's being closed up, okay, because it's got a very unique decoration uh, and marble. So now, since uh, there's no, not too many people are visiting nowadays, they been closed up, okay. But inside, this place called Basilica, it's a very beautiful place, okay. Basilica, it's a Roman place, originally built as a court of law. Later, when the Byzantine people came, uh, they converted this place to a church. Okay, let's go 
don't see it. You have to see this place. I see it from the outside. We can take a picture from the outside, but inside it's, no, it's not it's open not for public. Right okay, now. okay. okay. Yeah. For protecting? Yes. Okay. Just to protect it right now. Okay. So we're going into this different era and time. Yes, this is the oldest part of the city here. This is where the Phoenician lived here in the first place. And when the Roman came, they discovered, uh, they built at the top of the Phoenician city here. And the Roman and the, and the Byzantine built at the top of the Roman and the story goes on. Okay. So the, uh, uh, the latest excavation done here in early 1960 by the people from the University of Pennsylvania from America uh, these people, they came here and they did some digging around that area and what they found underneath, Phoenician housing and the Roman built at the top of it. Okay, so okay? they actually just wiped out the history of the old civilization exactly. beforehand and just built straight on top yes. of it. Now, what you see at the top here is mostly Roman. Uh, what we have here, we have a Byzantine church here to the right and then we have three temples, uh, Lepropater Temple, Roman Augustus Temple and Hercules Temple. Three temples in a row. The Romans would worship the different gods yes. and the different, this was their yes. myth, uh, mythology or, yes. or, or theology at that time. Yes. And, uh, uh, you can see the columns these here. Columns, yeah. These are all belongs to the temples. They are not being restored yet. Okay. So these are columns, bases, the capitals, everything belongs to these temples. Yeah. Someday we might see them stand again. Exactly. Uh, over there we have the, uh, another basilica mm -hmm. for the, uh, during the Roman time. Here in the middle here, when this area, as I told you, that by the end of the 6th century, uh, the Byzantine people, they had to leave that part of the city and come and live here in the old form. And they built a big wall around them, they called it the Byzantine wall, 7 meters high. Why they came here? Because there were a lot of barbarian tribes used to attack them all the time. So in order to be safe and live in peace, they had to build a, a big wall around them and to protect them here. Yeah, I see. And that was called the Byzantine Wall. Yeah, Byzantine Wall. Okay. Uh, another place here, they built a church here. And also they have a baptistry in this area here. Where we, yeah, here, a baptistry during the Byzantine period also. All the newborns would have been uh, yes. washed and baptized. Baptized, and okay. Now we are very close to the sea. As you can see behind these little hills is the sea. I, I can smell it. I yeah. can smell it before I see it. Yeah. It's like a beautiful uh, The harbor is breeze. very close. The harbor is very, very close here. This is the closest uh, area to the harbor. So harbor, old form, goes together. The lifeline of the, of the city. Yes. The lifeline would have been the, the yes. harbor. Where are we, where are we go next? Now, now just to give you uh, an idea where we are, we're going to go by the sea just to see how, how far we are from the sea and to, to have a close view to the harbor also. Okay, let's see, let's do it. Such a fresh atmosphere. Yeah. We're out at the sea now. Again, now, uh, this is the uh, very close point to the sea from here. To the right side, you can see the entrance of the harbor from here and the two lighthouses. Uh, uh, also, also very close, very close view to the theater from yeah, here, theater. as you can see, very far from here. A lot of area lot still of buried area with, buried columns, with and columns and stones and everything. So you can go miles and miles from here, and a sure thing you're going to find something underneath. So, yeah, everything. History. Remember in the beginning I said 60% of Lipt is still buried? Yeah. I, I, I meant it. This is where most of it is still happening. Still, still buried. Still buried. We can see a lot of ruins and monuments still hitting underneath. 